Hello everybody and welcome to episode 99 of the Agile podcast with me Paul Goddard and my good friend Jeff Watts. Episode 99 eh? So we've got that far through our um, episodes now and it's approaching episode 100. We're still in lockdown kind of in the UK. Many things have started to reopen including the pubs. So me and Jeff took this as the ho- hopefully the last indoor remote at home podcast you're going to hear hopefully for a long while uh, pending any second wave should we go back into lockdown but by the time episode 100 comes along we're hoping we'll be coming to you from a pub somewhere in the UK. Since lockdown started back in March in the UK Jeff and I have been pushing these episodes out thick and fast almost one a week uh, for the last 18 episodes so if you're not already subscribed that's a great way to make sure you get all those episodes straight onto your device and you can catch up over the summer months uh, with all the episodes that you might have missed along the way. But we're going to take a bit of a break for, for now during the next month or so just to get some time off with our families and enjoy some of the, the nice weather that we're hopefully going to get. But we'll be back for a big one with episode 100 uh, at the end of the summer. So listen through to the end of this podcast to hear how you could get involved in our episode 100 when it does come out. We wish you uh, a lovely summer. We hope you're all well. Take care and uh, let's play the jingle. Now you can say hello. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh look, my, uh, my beer is frothing. Oh, it's got a little a little nipple on it, Jeff. <laughs> Steady on. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got Banks's. Well, Banks. Banks imported Caribbean lager. Caribbean lager. Caribbean. Memories of where you should have been in March. Exactly. This is from Barbados. My wife bought it me as a birthday present because I didn't get to go. Oh, well, there you go. So this is what I should have been drinking but never got around to it. So here is my first sip of Banks, because I've never been to Barbados. We're going to Barbados. It's apparently legendary. And I can imagine that tasting even better in the sun by the side of the pool or on a beach. So is that like the the, the kind of Barbadian, is that the right word, Barbadian um, um, stock kind of lager you'd find in most... Or is it lager or beer? It's lager, which I mean, like I said, I've never been, but it's legendary. And yeah, in all the in all the forums of all the people who are so disappointed not to be able to go, where we were all commiserating ourselves, everybody was uh, constantly. There was a lot of mentions of missing out on banks. Beer. Oh, I see. Um, so it's brewed there, it's bottled there. I, they're yeah. very proud of it, um, and I'm sure they sell a lot of it. <laughs> and is it good? Mm. As far as lagers go, yeah, it's um, yeah, it, um, it does taste a bit, I'd say, more malty than um, perhaps your your English lagers, um, and that's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is association, isn't it? I think here, you know, if I'd have had if I'd have had banks while in Barbados, it would be even nicer because it would be bringing back the memories as well as just the taste. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice. It's do, you, nice. do you have a strong, a good memory for tastes? Uh, it's just the ta- it's just the the idea of cold lager, regardless of what type it was, remind you of being on a beach, and that's that's the memory you take away rather than the actual distinguishing taste of it. I mean, this doesn't taste like a Carling, right? Or a Foster's or a Carlsberg or something like that. I'm pretty sure I could distinguish between those and a taste yeah. test and if i you know had a few of these while sitting on a beach then um, i would probably it would probably maybe even if it didn't bring, bring back the memory it would probably bring back the feeling of relaxation i mm. think that's quite strong um because my memory itself long term isn't particularly specifically brilliant um but i do i do rem- i do associate things but we talked i think when we were in dublin we talked about the whether it's a myth or not, but the the the, uh, the Guinness always tastes better in Dublin because it doesn't travel as well and all this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Or it's, uh, yeah, the water that they use is fresher, whatever it might be. But um, 
whether that's true or not. But then I've, I've heard about people like have literally just been back to the pub saying, oh, the Guinness was, was just amazing. But, but that's probably because they'd forgotten how draft Guinness tastes rather than... Well, I, I was educated after that pubcast by one of our patrons, Graham. Were you? Yeah, who's from Dublin. And um, he said, because it's such a, a source of local pride, you know, if you was, if you served draft Guinness, that would be absolutely... You'd be the talk of the town, I imagine. It would be a nail in your coffin as a, as a, as a, as a pub. Yes. Um, they're so keen on it being absolutely the best it can be that every every morning they will let the taps run and actually waste a bit of Guinness every day to make sure that you know it has its it's at its optimum. And, and once you've got that sort of reputation, then it's a, it's a necessary cost to uphold that level of quality. Mm. So yeah, what are you drinking, Guinness? No, no, no. Hey. On that note, on that note, no. Um, I'm drinking. I've had it before on a podcast. I'm sure, um, maybe a, a long time ago now. But I've got. Um, Sanford Orchards, which has oh, yeah. um, been delivered by my parents last weekend, because uh, I've said on the podcast before, this is this is may- made literally about a mile from where my parents live, where I used to live mm-hmm. in uh, Crediton in Devon, and it's now kind of become fairly mainstream. As and you can buy, I think you can only buy it in supermarkets in the southwest or in Devon itself, but it's become pretty popular down there, and um, yeah, and it's a very nice drop. I've had it before, and uh, it's one of my favourites. And my parents usually bring a big crate of it when they uh, when they come and visit. So um, bless them. Yeah, it's kind of a nice. I've got, Mr. And Mrs. I've got, G. Yeah, well done, well done, Ken and Viv. Well done, Ken and Viv. Ken and Viv. So uh, I doubt I doubt they listen to this, Jeff. So we can say what we like about my parents and, now, and and to my wife as well for buying me my and parents. My wife, well Alison, good stuff. But uh, whereas your wife might maybe I'll listen to some of these episodes. My she parents, used to. I think she got bored. <laughs> my parents definitely do not listen to this so uh, we can say we're like god bless them how's your how's your week been um where are we now it's tuesday isn't it um pretty good pretty busy feel feel uh feel busy trying to get things tied up before um i'm taking time off ne- as, as of this time or wednesday next week i'm taking some much needed time off um because I feel like I've been more more busy doing less yeah. than I have been. Um, in, you know what I mean? In terms of there's been, it feels like there's been less actual work to do, but I feel like I've, I think it's mentally I'm, I'm more drained. Probably You've been working harder to uh, stay afloat, if you like, rather than actually making progress downstream. You've been coping with, with, a, with a current, a head current maybe. For, yeah. for, for want of a metaphor or analogy yeah so coping with um a little bit more uncertainty i suppose as we all are and coping with a little bit more trying to think on my feet and trying to um plan ahead a little bit hmm. and um prepare so yeah You're in a good place for a, for a holiday yeah i feel like i am i feel i feel much more tired than i think i would do at this time of year right now but um so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But I like I'm trying to clear the decks, trying to uh, tie up a few loose ends before I do. Yeah. But I feel like I've been, you know, actually getting stuff done, getting shit done, Jeff, during the day. So, how about you? Uh, well, yeah, I've had um, I've had an interesting couple of days. I've been playing product owner. Oh. Um, I can't say too much at this stage, but. Um, yeah, I've been working with with some teams who have been exploring ideas for for a new product. Um, uh, it's been fun collaborating. I've been getting into character. <laughs> uh, yeah, hence hence the the facial hair. Oh yeah, you, you, you're on, not quite as, as as long as mine, but you well, know, you, you know, know case will it? But um, yeah, I've been getting into character, playing playing personas. And you require a beard for that character, is that right? Yeah, well, facial hair, yeah, um, and and hats and oh, and yeah, yeah. So really, uh, yep. Always... Getting it there, we go. Hats, hat, very good. What's that? What, what would you call that hat? Um, well, this is some, a name. Some good, some good audio audio content now for our listener and the audience. Um, I'd say, oh, I don't know. It's kind of like a. You carry lots of them, but you don't know what they are. 
I think that's like a, a woolen trilby. See, I was going to say trilby, but I, I wouldn't have been confident. That's a trilby, but that's more. That's a kind of a just a black trilby. Yeah. Anyway, not great content, so we'll, we'll stop there. Okay. But yeah, you know, so- you literally, so you've been in. In character, I see. Okay, all right. Yeah, then. we've been having um, – we've had a couple of little mini sprints in teams coming up with different ideas. So multiple parallel safe-to-fail experiments, seeing where they go. And, uh, yeah, something something really interesting could come out of it. Who knows? Watch this space. Very good. So there's a bit of a change of pace. Did you have to go back and read your book just to remind yourself of how to do <laughs> Well, um, I figure uh, it's no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figure I'll, I'll just play it as well as I can. Yeah. Just be me. Do you know? I mean, you've you've done uh, all the roles over 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 your time. Do you have a? I know you don't like favourites and you don't like talking about favourites, but do you have um of the of the three roles you think you you perhaps more naturally sway with or have an affinity with? Which would you say it was? Um, see, I've always said, whenever I've done these personality type questionnaires, I've always come out very split, um, very even, well, whatever it is, whether it's disc, whether it's Myers-Briggs, whatever it is, I always come out very mixed. And I, 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 I worried about it when I, I did one a while. I remember actually voicing concern and saying, you know, am I just a jack of all trades, master of none? Um, but then I sort of rationalized it as, well, I can, I can kind of play the role that's needed. Mm. Uh, and and I like being needed, quite needy, uh, and so I like well I like being able to add value. And if there is a if there's a gap missing, then I'm I'm happy to play that gap, uh, whether it's scrum master, product owner, team member, whatever. And the other aspect of my personality, as you quite rightly said, is is I don't really have favourites. My favourite is the one that I've been playing least recently. Mm. Um, so uh, another. I used to, well, it's slightly annoying thing about me, annoying to me more than anybody else, is that when we go to restaurants, uh, and if if I look at the menu and think, okay, this is what I'm going to have, and then somebody else orders it, I don't want to order it anymore. Um, <laughs> that I, I like want to order something different. Yeah, uh, and yeah. yeah. Form. Yeah, well, I kind of miss out sometimes. I went out for dinner recently, first time for ages with with um, with another with another couple, and then all, so my wife and those two all ordered steak, and you know me, I like a steak, but the fact that they'd all ordered steak, I thought, well, I'm not going to order steak. That's boring. So, I'll give an example of the complete opposite, which is, and she doesn't listen to this. So it's my mother, and we've already talked about Viv, but uh, we'll talk about this more. Um, go to the fish and chip shop with her mum and dad. My mum will say, "Oh, what are you having, Ken?" To to her, to her husband, to dad, to my dad, and my dad will tell my mum what he's having, and she goes, "Oh, I'll have that as well." <laughs> or tends to, whether it's a restaurant, fish and chip shop, Indian takeaway, always tends to wait till my dad ask my dad what he's having, and then just choose the same thing. Complete opposite to you. Yeah, plus yeah. to follow the trend, social proof. Mm. Everyone else, everyone else is having it. Then it must be good. Yeah. Well, I suppose there's there's some safety in that. Yeah. Um, but it's more of a robust strategy than a resilient strategy. So if there's something wrong with the fish, then you're all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. But if it's brilliant, you'll all be happy. Yeah. Uh, whereas I'm I'm sort of you know I'm mitigating the risks at the global level, so we have greater societal resilience because of my independence yes very good. even if i may run the risk of suffering as a result mm. i'll take one for the team exactly jump on the grenade so to speak um i always came out as in those profiling things back in bt back in the day i always came out as a team player so that mm. kind of i think i assume that's myers briggs type stuff but um it was belvin isn't it yeah but is it belvin team roles Always came out as a team player, and I could almost spot my profile amongst all the others when it came out. And I think that's kind of how, how I, to, to a greater or lesser extent, and to a to my advantage or disadvantage, I always played the other two roles as wanting to be one of the team roles. Now I can see where that would be useful when you're trying to build rapport and trying to 
mm. speak to people on their level. But I can also see that that probably got me into more sticky situations when I needed to take more of a leadership role. I needed to take more of a authoritative stance that doesn't suit my natural my natural place or my natural preference. Yeah. Yeah. So, people, uh, huh? People pleaser. Yeah, that's my problem. Always have been, mate. Always have been. Product owners, product owners more than more than scrum masters, I think, have to rein in that aspect of their of their personality. Their job isn't to be liked. Their job is to build products that people like. Mm. Um, and yeah, sometimes that's they, they're not the same. Uh, and uh, to to iterate on ideas requires some honest feedback and. That's a, that's a tough thing because a lot of people associate feedback on an idea as feedback on a person. Mm. But just because you've tried something that, that I didn't like, the feature I didn't like or the design that I didn't like, doesn't mean that I don't like you. No. Uh, and doesn't mean that if I give you that feedback, you won't like me. And we have those sort of unconscious assumptions uh, which which can limit our ability to be effective. I had the um, – I'm doing some um, design work. I, rather, I've, I've – contracted some design work for myself for another little thing project side project i'm doing at the moment and um again i I suppose you class me as product owner within that sense and that designer came back to me with three different concepts for a design that he's uh, of a badge he's going to do for me um and my my first instinct is to say yes and again that's quite Got me into heaps of trouble before, Jeff, and but equally it's opened many opportunities for me before. But my default tends to be, and it is people pleasing, kind of rather than um, seek confrontation, is to accept what I've been given. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I need to push that back, but yeah, it's even, and I kind of defer that designer in this particular context has a lot more. Well, not a lot more, but different experiences to me about what good design looks like and what tell me what I need or what, what, what I think I need. Mm. Um, so it's, in, in a, it's difficult for me to sometimes say to disregard that specialist knowledge and say, you know what, I think I know, I think I've got, I think I, my gut instinct here is, is to say no and, or, or something different. It's hard for me to do that. That's just against my character sometimes. Mm. But when, and I, I, I'm, I'm talking about my, my book, Product Mastery. I, the, the one thing that, that springs to mind from that is I'm a big fan of a product owner being, to some degree, quite predictable mm-hmm. uh, because they can provide, a, a, regardless of what, what their style is, just being predictable. So a lot of energy is spent from by teams thinking, ooh, how is the product owner going to react? Mm. Now, if they can be pretty confident how the product owner is going to react, regardless of what it is, then they spend less time worrying about it and just waiting for it. Um, and that, that provides a certain sense of calm and allows the team to focus, put their energy where it's more worthwhile. But that product owner, as well as providing that certain level of predictability and stability for the team, being a little bit of a rock in the storm, if you like, they will have to, they'll have to flex their style as the situation requires and if you've got that sense of confidence and that sense of trust and almost predictability if you like then when you do step into a different role people pay attention to it so people that work with you know that you don't rock the boat for the sake of it um so when you do say something they think okay this this is important to paul because he wouldn't just say that for the sake of it do you know what I mean? Mm. So a product owner that's um, quite calm and easygoing, when they, you know, every now and again, when they say, well, no, 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 this cannot be like that. It has to be like this. It's not just, it's not a case of cry wolf. That that stands out as, all right, that's a little bit of a, out of character, so that must be important. Mm. But I, I, I still find it, yeah, I, even though I, I mean, this this particular designer I've only worked with maybe twice before, so he doesn't, you know, he's not a regular team member. He doesn't see me every day, no. um, so he probably doesn't know how I'm going to react. And he, even though that should give me a sense of it's okay to 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 react differently to how I perhaps normally would. Um, again, my default is to 
is to aim to please and you know to not not to make people feel bad for the effort they've put in so far yeah and that, uh, it's, it's a very very common trait you're not special mate and then um, that you know one common tactic that i found quite quite helpful for people in that regard is to think well if i'm pleasing this person who am i displeasing and considering the amount of people that are going to be using whatever it is that this person is designing for you putting their pleasing them above pleasing him makes it a little bit easier but you've got the short term in your face i can see him i can i'm speaking to him right now whereas i'm not speaking to these potential future users and probably never will in many cases yeah so it's it's it it takes a little bit of perhaps visualization a little bit of stepping back a little bit of perspective um but well at least conscious reflection Mm. to do that and yeah product owners that are aware of that and self-awareness is absolutely the first key step to managing any of our traits um yeah, just giving yourself time to be a little bit more aware so that you can be make a more conscious choice for your and everyone's benefit. Mm. So yeah, we've um we'll try and um keep these uh episodes a little bit shorter because they, they have been creeping a little bit longer. We've we noticed that the other day, didn't we? But try and get back on a kind of thirty minute um edit length here. But we hey, we need to talk about the fact that we've we're Itching to in inching towards episode one hundred, and itching, I, I, huh? And itching, and itching because yeah, it's that. Close. Your hair, right? It's quite itchy. <laughs> I, had to, I had to shave under here because it was getting too itchy. Anyway, um, I was speaking about design. He literally, literally just emailed me, but um, uh, how, how coincidental? No, but we are uh, inching towards and itching towards uh, episode one hundred. Hmm. It's, a, it's an arbitrary milestone, but it seems important to, to Worth celebrate. Um, and we, well, we, we need to tell the audience we're probably, I don't think we're going to get to episode 100 before we take a little bit of time off um, over the summer, which we normally do during August just because of holidays and stuff like that. But um, we've been doing these every week now for probably 15 weeks. If it, well, it feels like a long time, but um, certainly during lockdown, we, we stepped up our game and we've rattled through a few episodes but we are approaching 100 aren't we so it would be nice um what i thought about was it would be nice to include a few sound bites or um quotes whatever it might be from anyone who does listen who would like to send in a little uh um thank you or a, you know not a thank you sounds really uh <laughs> self-indulgent but but you know, any, anything they'd like to say about the podcast, or they'd like maybe a question they'd like us to answer, or uh, ask us anything on our hundredth episode, um, and we'll try and include them because we've been stitching together uh, together a few of those sound bites for the uh, Scrum Mastery Challenge, didn't we? But it would be nice mm-hmm. to hear, um, hear a few voices, uh, and I thought maybe we could make a game out of it by me playing you a voice, and then see if you can guess who it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> from one of our listeners but anything like that would um and you got any other ideas of anything anywhere you'd like to celebrate episode 100 um well i'd like i'd like that i um maybe maybe some some favorite memories yeah uh people's highlights from the podcast uh it's quite easy to to fall into a sort of retrospective mindset but you know it's it's a good opportunity any opportunity that that forces you to stop and think and how can you inspect and adapt we probably haven't really inspected and adapt, adapted too much recently no. um, just been on a on a on a on a roll really trying to deliver as much as we could for for throughout this period but yeah maybe some uh, some feedback would be useful um how about some some feedback in the start of the perfection game? That that would be cool. Some from our listeners, and I don't know. Maybe maybe we'd be brave enough to to play them without checking them first. Yeah, it's um, yeah, that would be that would be, and yeah, if well, certainly one of us has probably got to find a way to for people to drop them into a. Um, I suppose they could tweet it or DM us the, a link to it online somewhere, but uh, that would be cool. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to to hear some of those things. Nice to know that we're that we're not just talking to an empty, um, empty theatre every, every week. But um, no, I think people still are listening. I think they are. 
Well, the figures. Which is the one with the metrics? No, no it's um, people still seem, still seem to be listening. But on that, I think people um, that I've met at various workshops, meetups, conferences before that have, um, even the guy who was on my CSPO class a month or so ago, I caught up with him on a, a coaching chat the other week, and he said, I'm listening to the podcast, and, and he was talking about something we mentioned, which I could – I've got no idea. I couldn't tell you which episode it was and which what topic it was. But um, I think people obviously take away from it what they what they re- want to remember and what's particularly appropriate for them at that point in time, obviously. So, um, yeah, we'll keep doing well, some more. You're, so you're taking a bit of a gamble. So I remember a few episodes ago. You So this 100th episode has been a milestone that you've had an eye on for a while. Hmm. Uh, you were hoping at one point that we'd be out of lockdown by the time we got there and you were quite hopeless about it at, at one stage and we are and we're, and we're allowed to go to the pub now so we could we could go to the pub for our 100th episode but by going on holiday we're, you're putting that off and <laughs> i'm not saying it's a bad thing but there is there's a risk in delaying things right so it could be brilliant because we could have a lot we could have a bit of time off we could have a bit of energy we could come back re-energize you'd have some stories to tell from your holiday it could be a good way to restart the new series if you like or season um but equally we could be back in lockdown again and um, and what a feeling that would be for you if we came back <laughs> and episode was one uh, episode was one, uh, 100 was our first episode back in lockdown mark two yeah could be could be in full second wave by um by September, I suppose. That's the risk I'm taking. But well, yeah, it's just I think time is against us unless we try and do something over the weekend. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm teaching on Friday this week and Monday, Tuesday next week. So I'm starting to run out of days, and when we go on holiday on Wednesday, so we might be able to sort something out. But we'll we'll um we'll keep that under under our hats for now. As to when that might be. Oh. Just marking that because you're editing this week. Um, just, so, just so you know, I'm actually down in Bournemouth this weekend with Cody. Right, okay. okay. If you want to go down for fishing. Oh, okay. Just, just, that's, it. that's it. Going down Saturday, coming home Monday. Anyway, anyway back, to the, back to the podcast. <laughs> so, yeah, what, um, is there, what's your feeling after 100 episodes you still got energy for this you still think you've got something to give yeah um i think so i think so i think um i think i'm feeling a little bit disconnected from real life um because it obviously even though you can do you can do a lot from i'm still working obviously via zoom and what and what have you but it doesn't quite feel like I've got so many, so much connection with companies themselves. Certainly, mm. people, but but perhaps not with their environment. I suppose that's that's the missing part for me. I don't feel as connected to people's environment. When people are talking about their situations, it's harder to for me to visualize it and to um, empathize with it because I I can't be in that room with them or that in that building with them when they're going through that. I think that helps me a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I think whether that will come in the autumn, who knows, but um, we're, we're looking to get a bit more face to face if we can. So aren't we? So I think that would be nice. I think that would be, um, give me a, a refresh, a refresh on, on some content and some, um, some stories to tell. But yeah, yeah, I'm, in that respect, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Yes. I know you are. I'm very lucky because Every day, you know, I'm still I'm still coaching. So I, today, I was talking to 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 one leader about the the difference between local optimization and global optimization, and how you know tribes actually is an interesting choice of word because tribalism is very defensive and um, segmenting. Mm. When actually, as an organisation, you want to you want to go past the tribe. Uh, so it's. Um, I'm still getting that, which which I'm I, I know I'm incredibly lucky to have. Uh, Do you get it as much though? Because obviously you're in your shed and you're and you're whoever you're speaking to are in their house. I'm assuming. Yeah. Does it? Because to me, it feels still doesn't feel the same. It feels different. 
No, I know what you mean. And don't get me wrong. I, w- I would love to be back in, in their office and walking through their corridors and yeah. in their canteen and, and, and so on. But um, I think it's been, so I've been used to this, this coaching remotely doing it for years, mm. whereas a lot of people aren't. And it's interesting to see how much more comfortable these people have become with, with this setup and actually how much more focused they've been able to be. Mm. Where when I know I absolutely understand and, and I can empathize with, they actually miss the going from room to room mm. because I'm as well. I, I, I like novelty. I like change. Um, and, and they're stuck in the same room on the same screen for a while, but we've actually been experimenting with different things, but they, they've, they've become more used and more focused. So when they've been going from room to room, actually, you know, it takes them about five minutes to settle down because they've just rushed from somewhere else, some other meeting or somebody else has just left the meeting and they're sorting something out. And the next five minutes they think, well, I've got to finish now because I've got to leave. Even if it's not said, they're sort of mentally packing up their stuff because mm. they know they need to be somewhere else. Whereas now there's, it's a little bit easier for them to focus um, and the, they've relaxed a lot more into into the coaching. And actually, I think they valued, if anything, I think they valued their, their time with me more because it's so different. Mm. The fact that it's, I'm, I'm not in their organisation. All of their other calls are with people in their organisation. Um, and I know, I, although other meetings were before were the same, but I think it's just that everything else being so the same, in the same room with the same screen has highlighted the bigger difference. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Well, um, let's call it there and um, we'll sweat over, we'll let, we'll let our audience sweat over whether we're going to be in the pub or not next time around, but I'm hopeful that we will be whenever episode 100 comes and nobody will know when it, when it will drop. We won't give anyone any warning. Well, but if we want to give them some warning, we, we if we want some input, we need to give them something. So yeah, we'll we'll, um, we'll we'll put the input. What we, what's our request now? We need to give them the request now. So if you would like to your um, if you are happy for your voice to be included on our one hundredth pod um, podcast, send us uh, a link to a a short and let's say no more than twenty seconds. Yeah, I think. Um, of something you'd like to say on the uh, episode 100 it could be anything as long as it's relatively clean and uh, and tasteful and inoffensive but um if you'd like to contribute and uh, we'll put we'll pick out some of the better ones and um it will give us something to to reflect on any any of your reflection that you'd like to be part of our 100th pub, uh, podcast and cool. send us a link to it online the sound clip somewhere online Either DM it on the Twitter to us directly, or to me or Jeff on Twitter or whatever. However, if you've got our email addresses, just send it straight through. Yeah, we're on Instagram. We've got we our are. own website. It's inspectingadapt.com, jellify.co.uk. So you can you can contact us various ways. Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I think that'd be pretty cool. I'd, I'd like to hear what people have to say, and I, for one, would would play them blind. Would you? Yeah, I, I would play them blind because if it is offensive, we can edit them out. But I would like <laughs> no, but I would like to actually hear them and respond to them genuinely rather than knowing what's going to be there. All right, yeah, we can do that. We can arrange that. Okay, cool. Right then. All right. Well, um, if I don't see you before you go on holiday, have a great holiday, mate. Thanks, my friend, and uh, you. If you're taking any time off, then um, you deserve enjoy. it. Yeah. No matter what everybody else says, you do. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, mate. And have a happy August to all of our listeners as well. Yes. And enjoy, hopefully, enjoy some of the good weather. And we'll see you on uh, for the next episode, episode 100. We'll be there. Ooh, so <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.